Hi, my name is Amber Case, and I am here to talk about the future of micropayments. One of the first things that I think about when I think about people trying to make money online is that creators really have three options for surviving right now. The first option is closed marketplaces. And what you can sell and what you can do are really structured by these marketplaces. You list your items or goods or sign up for one of these and you're beholden to whatever the terms of service are. They can also go out of business and you don't have your marketplace anymore. Uh, there's also the recurring subscription model, which is reasonable, but usually you have to do this through a marketplace and that makes it tough for some people. And it also means that many people have to sign up for lots of different recurring subscription services in order to pay creators. And then finally, we have one of the largest ones. We're all very well aware of the experience of being online and getting a lot of pop-up ads everywhere. Surely there must be a better way. And this is the purpose of this talk to introduce the concept of micropayments and web monetization. So what are micropayments? Micropayments are just small amounts of money. It could be anywhere from hundreds of millions of a cent to a dollar or in any currency anywhere in the world. Now, really the whole point of a micropayment is to enable this missing middle in these kind of small one-time purchases. So we know of medium large transactions like things that you would do with PayPal and Venmo or Gumroad or buying a PDF online or maybe even buying a book. Uh, and then you have your recurring subscription purchases like Netflix, New York Times, Amazon Prime. But what's missing in the middle is all of these little purchases that you might want to make. Maybe a small piece of artwork, a browser plugin, a small tip or a donation, a drawing tutorial, you name it. All these different things that you don't want to get a subscription model for, but they probably are going to be less than five pounds or euros or dollars. What's the barrier to this? One of the barriers is processing cost. If you are charging a dollar to a credit card, you might have a 45 cent processing fee. When the web came out, there was this 402 payment required. There wasn't an idea for web monetization. There wasn't a story about paying for things online yet. And so this was just reserved and never built out. I'm really interested in seeing what happens with the next generation of the web when people try to solve this problem. This is kind of this, this missing number that has perpetually fascinated me. How can we enable micropayments globally in any currency or cryptocurrency without the transaction fees? This is something that's being worked on right now. So if the internet runs on protocols and we have email with POP and SMTP, you will get it. You don't need to have an AOL account to receive an AOL email from me in your Hotmail account. If I have an AOL account, I can email your Hotmail account. Protocols are really interesting. If we used a protocol for payments, instead of me having to sign up for a Venmo account to pay you in your Venmo account, we would have interoperability that's much more at the level of email. So where's the protocol for transferring money? Interledger, designed as an open protocol suite to send payments across different ledgers. That means payments across any currency you like. If I want to pay you in Bitcoin, but you don't have a Bitcoin account, you want to get paid in euros, I could send you in Bitcoin and you can get paid in euros. As simple as that, but without all the transaction fees. Something that's interoperable at this level becomes much more interesting. Typically with a credit card, 45 cents. With Interledger, it's nothing. Some examples of micropayments are 99 cents for a song on iTunes. One of the more nuanced ideas of micropayments is royalties in the music industry. This was a manual process before. You'd have to have a listen log and you would have to jot down the songs that you played on the radio and then you'd have to send them to the publishing company and then that record label would then pay out royalties. It was a really tedious process. We can solve all of that now. So how does this work? Let's go through a specific use case here. If you're a content creator, you get an interledger payment pointer and you put it in the header of your website. This is what the payment pointer looks like. It's really, really small and really, really simple. And that's your payment ID. So ILP, Interledger Protocol, uphold.com is the wallet that you will get your payment delivered to. And your payment ID is right at the end of that string. 
Then when somebody that supports web monetization visits your website, they will stream automatically tiny bits of real money towards your payment pointer proportional to the amount of time spent on your site. And you could decide to get paid in whatever you want with the Interledger payment pointer. And you actually see it happening in real time with a browser plugin. How do you actually monetize a website? Right now, you have to get a digital wallet. This is where all your payments will arrive via Interledger. The wallet has to support the Interledger protocol. Um, and currently, there's two wallets that support this, Uphold and GitHub. I'm going to go over Uphold because it allows you to transfer any currency into any other currency and lots of cryptocurrencies as well. It's super useful. It's super minimal. The user experience is really good, and I've used it for a long time. First, you create your Uphold account. And when you sign up for the digital wallet, you have to verify your identity. It could take a day or two for it to complete. Pretty straightforward to sign up. Once you sign up, you can find your Interledger network payment pointer in the Uphold app and copy it. You can also use this address and paste it anywhere on the web and people can scan it and they can send money directly to your wallet. So copy that out. And then this is the payment ID code here. So between the header of your website, you can place this in the meta name and the link rel and you are good. Here's an example in uh, the NeoCities website, which is a static website provider. It's kind of the new version of GeoCities. All you need to do is add the code to the header of every page you want to monetize. If you are using WordPress, add your payment ID to the coil plugin settings, and then your entire site will be monetized. If you are using Webflow, click on project settings, add custom code, add in the payment ID in the header, and you should be good to go. And then you should be able to check your Uphold wallet and you should start to see small bits of money coming in. So for one of the, the keynotes that I gave at the Future Micropayments Conference, I ended up getting about $10, uh, which was pretty good considering we didn't have a lot of people at the conference, we kept it really small. So that's it, you're monetized. If you want to do more, you can sign up for a free Coil Creator account and this allows you to monetize your YouTube account, monetize videos on Cinnamon, which is kind of a web monetized version of YouTube. You can start a Coil blog. You can post links on the Coil blog page. If a Coil subscriber lands on your Twitch stream, you will get Twitch bits. But it gets more interesting. With the web monetization API, you can share revenue with the team. And I think this is super important because oftentimes creators who are doing a photo shoot or a video have multiple creators involved. It's not just one director that gets all of the money. Um, you can actually split up and add weight to each person on the team. So if your makeup artist, your special effects artist, your director, your producer, your talent, you can add all of their payment pointers and have that revenue share pay out when somebody visits the site, looks at their content, reads their blog, anything like that. Um, you can choose to split your income between up to 10 payment pointers. So this is super versatile. But what I'm really interested in is this concept of probabilistic revenue sharing. It can have a random choice every time a web monetized visitor loads your page. So you could have a bunch of different payment pointers, up to 10, and there's a different chance of getting chosen. So the visitor pays to the chosen pointer until the page is reloaded or closed. I just love that you can start to do all of these fractional revenue options instead of a one size fits all payment. So the other half of the equation is how to support creators online with web monetization. And this is, this is for you if you're not a creator and you just wanna support people it's fairly straightforward. Um, you can sign up with a Coil account and just create the account at coil.com. And the reason why you want to do this is Coil currently is the only provider of micropayments to creators with the web monetization API right now. If you are creating a competitor to Coil, if you are creating something that supports the web monetization API, there is so much money out there available to support more people to work on this because it's one of the missing gaps in the web and how we pay for things online and how we support creators. So it's really exciting um, and I encourage you to look more into it. 
Coil might be another subscription service at $5 a month. But what it does when you pay $5 a month is any web monetized enabled site, you will constantly stream payments towards. And that becomes very interesting because you're not subscribing to a bunch of different sites. You're not paying a bunch for a bunch of different content. It just sends payment automatically based on what site you visit. So how does the website know whether visitors are paying attention? Visitors need to have Coil subscription and a Coil browser extension installed on their browser. And then you can actually see how much money you're paying the site automatically. So it's easy to add the Coil extension. We all have lots of extensions installed in our browsers. Um, here is the Firefox extension for Coil. And then you just log in with your Coil account and you can see your support. And this is what it looks like. It just says Coil is paying. This content is included in your membership. This site is web monetized. There's plugins for Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Brave. But if you're on mobile, how do you do this? Increasingly, we're having more options for web monetization and mobile browsers. Puma is the first mobile web browser with native support for web monetization and handshake names. Uh, so this is super interesting because you can download this and just automatically have all of this baked right into the browser. I'm really interested in where browsers are going and where mobile browsers are going. So let's look at some examples of web monetization in the wild. TechDirt uses web monetization as an alternative to ads. And if you have a Coil account and the Coil browser extension, Coil will automatically deposit money into TechDirt's wallet. Pitchfork, the really big music site, is web monetized with a payment pointer. And Pitchfork visitors that are Coil subscribers contribute money to the site simply by browsing it. Web monetization and gaming is really interesting. So there is a really fun game called sushiparty.io. If you're a Coil subscriber, you don't see any ads. You get extra gacha balls with every five minutes of playtime. Um, and you get other surprises as well. There's a bunch of different games out there that use web monetization for bonus game levels, more in-game lives, special outfits or costumes. But you can also use it to enable, let's say, secret blog posts for community members or bonus track links or secret members only areas. Pretty much anything you want to do, you can pretty much enable with web monetization if you try it out. The very popular photo app uh, gives features to Coil subscribers, including ad-free browsing. There is a new social network called MG Social, and it allows people to make money in a couple different ways. First, you can have web monetization when Coil users read your posts. So here's an example of Toby's post from Puma browser, and here's the amount of money he made off the post from a couple weeks ago. If a post is really popular, you can get paid a lot more. This is an example of a social network with web monetization built in. And it supports all sorts of different post types like videos and MP3s and polls and images and text. And there are no ads because web monetization is built in. Uh, you just use JavaScript and detect if a person is making micropayments, then you can show them bonus content that normally other people wouldn't be able to see. So let's talk about the future of micropayments. Where is this going? This is a really, really new part of the web. This is trying to solve that 402 payment required problem by making a protocol that allows uh, cross ledger payments. It's also trying to figure out that missing middle between medium sized purchases and subscription models. It's trying to go from a world of global currencies to a world of payments that can be split up into very small parts. Uh, going through discrete dollars and cents and euros and francs to something that is divisible and truly global. Late last year, I ran a conference called The Future of Micropayments on November 5th, 2020. One of the speakers at the conference, Jeremiah Lee, presented an amazing video on three wins web monetization needs to have to succeed in 2021. I was going to excerpt a lot of this video, and then I realized that I'm just going to play the video for you so that you can see it. It's only four minutes long and really gives an excellent overview of what you can do to help make web monetization happen in 2021. Hi, 
I'm Jeremiah Lee, and I've been a fan of micropayments for a long time. I tried to create a micro-tipping service using then-new APIs from PayPal way back in 2010. Despite working with their developer advocates, <laughs> developer advocates, PayPal abruptly shut me down. I moved on to other ideas, but I always felt that that one was special. When I learned to flatter, I immediately signed up. Same with Brave, but I just couldn't abandon Firefox. There is a lot of prior art in this space, but web monetization is different. The web has been powerful because it has been outside the control of any single company. We can't break an oligopoly of online advertising networks with a monopoly on micropayments. And that brings me to the first thing I think web monetization needs to win, more providers. Coil, I am so grateful for you, but you can't carry this vision on your own. We need more web monetization providers. The European Union is desperate to counter the American companies who control the internet. They want to fund creators. They want to break surveillance capitalism. They need to get on board with web monetization. But to do that, they need web monetization providers in their currency and in their language. Today, COIL only accepts US dollars, and its service is only in American English. Derek Silvers gave this fantastic TED Talk called The First Follower. When you're the only one doing something, you're not leading anyone. The first follower transforms a lone person into a leader. If the leader is the flint, the first follower is the spark that makes the fire. Web monetization needs its first follower in the provider space. And that first follower will not be competition for COIL. It will be an accelerant of what COIL has championed to grow the overall market. It will also provide assurances to hesitant content creators that they're not going to be locked in to a single vendor. I think the ideal candidate is Flatter, or perhaps uBlock Origin, or another ad and tracker blocker who wants to give its users a way to not only stop the bad stuff on the web, but to contribute to a better model as well. And this brings me to the second thing web monetization needs to win, better branding. Once there are multiple web monetization providers, content creators who pay well their content are going to need more appealing language than requires a web monetization provider. It's fine today because content creators can say something slick like exclusively available with a COIL membership, but hopefully that changes soon. So instead of telling people that they need a web monetization provider subscription, I propose that we call it the web multipass. It's a pass to access content from all over the web available for purchase from COIL and other fine retailers. The emphasis is on the capability, not the provider of the capability. The third and final thing I think I can squeeze into a lightning talk about what we need to win is an outreach effort to get existing content creators with high brand affinity to adopt and promote web monetization or the web multipass as a way to support them. The three biggest that come to mind are NPR, PBS, and Wikipedia. These three nonprofits are well-known and respected content providers. They also raise most of their funds from their audiences already. Their audiences want to support them. So getting those audiences to get a subscription will not only help those major creators, but it will also help lesser known creators. Because when those new subscribers who want to help Wikimedia, um, they'll also be supporting thousands of smaller creators that they also encounter online. I love that the grant for the web is creating opportunities for creators who don't yet have audiences. But building an audience who wants to support you is hard, and it takes a long time. To get more people signing up for a web multipass, we need to convince content creators with established audiences that they can supplement, supplement their revenue safely. I don't know who has a connection to NPR or the Wikimedia Foundation, but I'm certain that it's not an impossible connection to make. And even if NPR or PBS themselves are not interested yet, there are hundreds of affiliate stations of theirs who probably will be. Again, I think the web monetization API is the best implementation yet of micropayments to solve real problems for content creators and users of the web. It hasn't seen the adoption that I hoped it would see in 2020, but I think a few strategic steps will help it break out. A lot of people focus on the really big changes, like I'm gonna make a huge browser and it's gonna do this. In reality, all of the newest, biggest stuff generally starts really small. If just the smallest atoms shift in our experience of the web by simply changing or creating new protocols or just collaborating with what already exists in a clever way, it doesn't take a lot to create a giant shift over time. A lot of solutions in this area are going to be made from thinking larger than the web. Before crypto, we were limited to thinking in terms of dollars or euros or physical abstractions. And before we had the Interledger protocol, it was really hard to stream micropayments around the world and have them go from one currency to the other. 
But what if any content on the web could have a payment pointer embedded into it? Ted Nelson, who created HTTP, also coined the term micropayment in 1960. And he came up with this idea called trans copyright. Let's say you're publishing a story and you choose an image to head your article. Because of that, you're automatically sharing your monetized profits with the image artist based on attention. Everything could be broken up into atomic content with a series of rules. The rules would have the interledger payment pointer for the original content author or authors, the publisher or distributor, how long their publishing rights last, their agent, their helpers, maybe for this photo it could be the stylist and makeup artist and their share of the revenue. But more importantly, I see a lot of people still work in this old siloed nature of the web that we've come to understand today. And I don't think that's the way to go. I think that in a good ecosystem, there's many levels of participation and open source is really important. Glass is useful because it's empty. You can put what you want into it. It's, a, it's an incredibly clever invention. But I see a lot of people inventing vessels that only hold one type of liquid and they don't work well with other glasses. They don't bring people together, they split people apart. Let's just take an example. WordPress runs approximately 30% of the web. One of the reasons is that at every level, someone can participate in the ecosystem. And like an empty glass, you can extend it and you can fill it with what you like. You can write plugins for it and they can be part of a marketplace. But I wanna see people doing that for the web right now. So my call to action to you is to think a lot bigger and to create wormholes through the gunk of the web that was there before. This is a super unique moment in history. Support a creator today. One of the ways to do it is to sign up for Coil, monetize your site, experiment with web monetization, build new models, new frameworks, new technologies, or use old ones in new and interesting ways. If you wanna learn more about web monetization, this is a guide to web monetization there's also a great web monetization overview from Coil Docs that you can check out as well. Interledger protocol, uh, interledger.org, all sorts of interesting information here. This will show you how to set up and use Interledger, manage Interledger accounts programmatically, and spin up a local Interledger protocol network. Late last year, I co-founded a conference called The Future of Micropayments. It was the first ever web monetized conference. We had people from all over the world. But the most important part is that we put all the video and sessions up on the web. There is a really big post that talks about almost everything that's happened in micropayments and web monetization. And finally, if you are at all interested in making a startup or project or plugin or anything that has anything to do with web monetization, I encourage you to apply at Grant for the Web grantfortheweb.org. I'm super excited about this program. There's already a lot of funding that's been delivered and the projects that are coming out are really exciting. There's a hundred million dollars for people out there right now to work on web monetization. If you need more links and content, I'll be putting all my slides up on slideshare.net slash caseorganic. You can always just ask me any question you like on caseorganic on Twitter. Thank you so much. It's been great to be with you here today, and I hope you get a kickstart on understanding some of these concepts and becoming a contributor to the industry of the future. Hopefully I'll see you around at hackathons and in the web monetization community.